Housing starts and building permits rose to their highest level in nine months. More evidence that an economic recovery is underway. Joining us now to discuss just where we are in the housing cycle is real estate attorney Sherry Olofsson, also Susan Wachter, real estate and finance professor at Wharton Business School. And we have CBC's Diana Olick with us as well. Um, Susan, let me start with you. I saw a surge in permits. That's what happens when a recession is ending, right? Absolutely. We see a surge in, well, surge is a strong word, but apartments are up, which is exactly a reflection of the overall economy. Good news. Uh, Sherry, you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We're starting to see some sustained patterns in the home starts in particular between last month and this month, which, of course, were at a peak in uh, 05, 06, and then tanked in 08. But we're also starting to see patterns in some of the other indicators, like home sales, which Diana has noted are up for six months in a row now. Uh, also, the home prices and values are going down less rapidly. And last month, we saw actually saw a decrease in the number of foreclosures, which were down for the U.S. by 1%. All right, Diana, you've heard some optimism. Are you ready to join the parade? Dot, 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 <laughs> question mark. As you know, I always say to you, Larry, not my job to join the parade, just my job to look inside the numbers and tell you what I see. And that's what I want to do on the housing start numbers. First of all, you want to look at single family versus the multifamily. The surge that we saw in this past month was really in multifamily, which has been at a record low. That is apartments. And that's because multifamily in the commercial market just can't get the credit to build these buildings. We did actually see a small drop in the uh, starts for single family, but it's still at a good level. It's still rising generally overall, and that's because experts say that they expect to see housing starts recover over a one to two year period. So again, good news that housing starts are not falling further, but we need to note that the big surge that we did see this past month was in multifamily, which continues to struggle, and we need to watch that as we continue to watch the commercial market. All right, Susan Walker. And there are also... No, go ahead. Go right ahead. There are also some other important things to keep in mind, like Diana was saying, in terms of the perspective. There's three things that I try to keep in mind. One is that there's a big difference between things getting less worse and an actual recovery. So even though housing starts may be up 1% overall, they're still down 30% from last year and 70% from the peak. Well, even I mean, though numbers like... Well, I mean, like we don't want, we don't want housing maybe. starts to be jumping by too much. We still haven't cleared out all the no. inventory, right? I mean, we're not no. totally through the foreclosure cycle, exactly so right. housing starts right. Exactly but in right. terms of keeping perspective, in terms of keeping perspective, when we talk about, for example, foreclosure numbers being down, the foreclosure count is now down by 1% last month, we still have to remember that 360,000 people lost their homes last month. So we still have a huge and volume that's important, of but guys, And guys, I think also that's, important that's to remember, important. keep that first-time home buyer tax credit in mind, because new homes have really been relying that on lot. The builders have been saying that's a real surge. They're up on Capitol Hill pushing harder than ever, even harder than the realtors, I think, trying to get that tax credit expanded and extended because they want their market juice. Without that, I'm interested to see what happens to new home sales and how that turns into starts. Well, Susan Walker, just guys, a couple no data. Has gotten Susan, the best news. So there's a couple data points. Uh, yes. Single-family home starts. 88% last three months, annual rate. Uh, single family yes. permits, 68% at an annual rate. I mean, I would pray at the altar of a bottoming. That would be the greatest thing in the history of the earth. Let me get your take on this. Well, to me, the best piece of news here, which no one has mentioned yet, is inventories. Inventories are down, and they're down pretty substantially. This is a big jump down, which means that this is bullish for housing prices going forward, which feeds back to foreclosures. So that's where I see the real good news in this. Susan Walker, just one more. Uh, everyone's talking about the housing credits, which the National Association of Realtors love because they love any little subsidy that they can possibly get. I just want to ask you a scientific question. Do we encourage and put too many resources in housing? What about business investment? What about CapEx? I mean, why do we so want to put all this into housing, for heaven's sake? That's social policy. It's not necessarily good economics, is it? We do all live in a house. Well, we certainly overdid it this time, didn't we? But the question of this uh, particular tax subsidy uh, is, are you really risk averse? Do you want to stop it now just as we are bottoming, that's really a question. There's no science answer for that. Yeah, and, and Sherry, let me ask you about what's going on with Fannie and Freddie, because, you know, this is a topic that people bring up all the time, that they are back out there again, making loans with 3 and 5 percent right. down. It seems like, at least in that group, they're inflating the bubble again a little bit, to Larry's point of, of right. throwing resources at that. Does that make sense? 
Yeah, well, that goes to two points. It goes to some of the variables that are still in place, like we just talked about, the housing credit, but also mortgage interest rates. That is helping to keep mortgage interest rates down. Uh, and one of the other variables is these modifications that are being done now, because traditionally those modifications have a six, about a 60 percent failure rate. Uh, and we don't know how that's going to play out either. So the point is that, that you know, the GSE is buying up some of these, uh, making credit more available to people is a big part of the variables that are playing into how this will end up. Yeah, it, it is. I mean, for better or for worse, I think some would argue. Uh, I, I mean, why don't, we give, why, don't, yeah. why don't we give full cash expensing for the investment of new equipment by businesses? For example, we have manufacturing, we have transportation, we have to be competitive worldwide. I mean, we put too much into housing, for heaven's sakes. Right. That's my little take. So. All right, we got to leave it there. Guys, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it.